Welcome back to Snapping Towels, a couple weeks off. Uh, this is episode seven of 2023 Snapping Towels. I'm Cam Williams, along with my co-host, as always, Kyle Foote. Yes, just because we were not on the mics doesn't mean we did not have eyes on games. We of were course, in the film room. Of course we did. Sometimes you just need to take a step back and see where the, ca- the cards might lie. Some part of me is glad we did. Some part of me, you know, wishes we could get them out, but here we are. Yeah, um, you know, Friday night of last week was, I think, arguably b- behind the Maryland-Virginia game three or four weeks ago. Duke, Virginia on Friday night, game of the year. Donowski in the rain. What more can you ask for? A heavy a ACC heavyweight that you could probably circle on your schedule every year. Um, you know, I think the kids showed up for it. How about Duke, man? I mean, they're hitting their stride. You know, it's they're, they're sitting in ten and one with a loss to Jacksonville in February, of course, and mm-hmm. uh, just beating kind of everybody's number one. Um, Pretty impressive. Duke was great. I mean, uh, I think the assertion of Garrett Ledman this year on the offensive end is a huge spark plug for him. He had a couple of, he had a couple cannons. Um, and then you add a big dominant ACC midi to a Dyson Williams, Brendan O'Neill attack that could get, that can get a lot of things done. It's just, it's kind of a two-headed dragon offensively, which they haven't had in the last couple of years coming from the op- coming from the midfield. They've had the attack. Now they're adding in a little midfield with some small Dodgers, some freshmen. Uh, Blue Devils excite me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Brendan O'Neill with nine points, six and three. Um, I mean, On our guy. shots. Yeah, our guy, Xander Dixon, came up with a massive night. Uh, I mean, honestly, he's one of the better – you, know, you take out that Maryland game where I felt like he was uh, a little bit physically overmatched, to be totally honest. Um, you know, I think he's one of the best American finishers we've seen in the college game in the last decade. Um, I mean, the kid's hands are elite. And just like the, the chemistry that he has, not only with Schellenberger, but his off-ball chemistry with uh, Peyton Cormier, I think is something special and gets kind of overlooked. You know, you got a righty and a lefty. Um, I mean, this is going to be – I hope this is a Final Four matchup. I really, really do. I don't, think, I don't think that the the result of this game really means anything, aside from that Duke is kind of unequivocally the number one team right now. Aside mm-hmm. from that, which honestly doesn't mean much, obviously, because all these teams are going to the tournament and hosting first-round games and, you know, whatever, I would just – die for this to be a for, uh, final four matchup yeah i would love that um yeah offensively you know from virginia we need to see a little bit more aggressiveness from schellenberger he only had one shot i think if the if the who's want to win especially late in the season he's gonna have to have more than one shot that he missed um but how about Peyton cormier just you know showing up and kind of grabbing that game by the balls Dude, money in the bank. You know, I feel like every game, you know, honestly, six for 15, you know, 40% shooting, it's a great day for, um, you know, an average guy. It feels like he's like six for nine every game, just insanely efficient. But, you know, six for 15. um, You know, one thing that really stood out to me uh, and, and what I was saying after the Maryland game is, in my personal opinion, I know Schellenberger's resume is, you know, makes him arguably the best player in the history of, you know, UVA, which I, I can't argue with. I kind of thought during the Maryland game and just before and just after that uh, Thomas McConvey was their best player right now. I think he's kind of their X factor. Um, Maybe their most important guy. One goal, one for seven against Duke, you know, you lose a two goal game. I think he's got to have three, four points at least. He's got a short stick. Um, I love his game. And I think when he plays well, Virginia is almost unbeatable. Um, so we need more from McConvey. Mm. Um, I mean, I think he's a, he's a pro right now, NLL, PLL. Um, I, I agree. I'm not going to go the lengths and call him their best player by any means. Um I don't think he's their best midfielder, and even I wouldn't even go that far. I think he's who's their best midfielder. I'd say Griffin sh- shots. He needs to be the X factor. Shots doesn't get a lot of runs. 
You saw like, I, don't, I don't see him that much. Yeah, he gets out there. I mean, I, I know he's out there, but I feel like it it should be – honestly, I want to see Schutz, McConvey, and uh, Maison. I want to I see Maison. <laughs> I want to see those three guys out there like 70% of the time. Yeah, that would Just that the would meat be stick nuts. line. That would be nuts. Um, they threw Mac, uh, Macintosh in at midi. Uh, they mix it up a lot, and and it's interesting. I don't Is it think too many cooks in the kitchen. I think we could be looking at a, similar to Duke last year. I think too, too many cooks in the kitchen is a great analogy for it. At times with Virginia, um, we'll see. I mean, it's still regular season. They could just be it's early April. I think Lars, they'll be fine. But like I said, like I don't think that the result of this game really means that much aside from you know who's number one this week on monday yeah um sure but hell of a game unbelievable level of lacrosse standalone game on a friday night great showcase for the game i just um, wish it wasn't raining honestly danowski in the rain is iconic <laughs> <laughs> you know just like that hair that face in the rain you know you'd yeah. rather see a beautiful night in charlottesville but um at Clockner. But something about Donowski in the rain just just gets me to the television. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to calm Cam down, we'll move on. <laughs> um, like I got, I got to, I got to kick this one off. Um, in our two years of broadcasting this show, I've been pretty hard on the Michigan Wolverines. Mm. Um, by far the biggest win in program history. Uh, an absolute, you know, we have arrived W. Um, I think we, we've we seen it in flashes this year. I mean, I remember the early season matchup with Virginia. I was very impressed with their athletes, um, what they could do between the lines. You know, obviously have respect for uh, Zawada and company down on offense. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, to go to Bird Stadium, or it's called something different now, but, you know, to go to Maryland, and beat the Terps. Um, I mean, that's, that's, fun. that's that you've arrived, you know? Here's my takeaway. You have a, you have a veteran coach at Michigan that coached a lot of years, Kevin McConroy or McConroy, yep. Kevin McConroy, McConroy. sorry. McConroy. It's always, they always know a little something extra when you do that. Um, I remember some assistants we had, you know, coached at Maryland, coached at Virginia. Whenever we went to play Virginia or Maryland, it was always a tight game because they just knew exactly what the the team they coach for and what they want to do. You know what they want to do. With just scheme wise, the way what they eat in the morning down to a T. So it doesn't surprise me. And then they coach with a little extra juice. They have a they have a better w- speech before the game. They've got a better halftime speech. They can make the adjustments. They know the personnel. They've known them since they're eighth graders in high school. Ooh, middle school. Um, or freshman in high school. Uh, so it's it's not the most surprising thing I've seen, especially because of due to Maryland's roster this year and what they've been kind of putting out. I think if you have some attacking that could get physical down low with them, you'll have success. No, it's not like Maryland has this lockdown defense like they always do, and then the All American attackmen that punch it home for them, and then the the monsters in between the lines. They kind of you know a little dainty attack that's that's lost a lot from last year. Some some attacking play in midfield, and then a, a pretty a pretty good D losing their All American goaltender two games in Maryland is low not take away from the Wolverines this is a great win on the road to then put them in a chance to get in the big 10 if they continue to play like this we'll see it's it's a program win no doubt about it honestly to me the story of the game if you look at the box score and you look at you know Mm. before looking at any Maryland box score you're just assuming Luke Weirman is gonna go at least 60%, at least. I mean, he, he dominates P. LaSala, let alone, you know, every other Fogo in the country. Yeah, he's a pro. 46% at the X. 
Yeah. Um, for for this Michigan kid to go twelve for fifteen, and Michigan 80%. rolled out they rolled out two guys. Um, you know, and for for one of them to go twelve for fifteen, I think is kind of the the difference in the game. Um, you know, you get these kids, you get you get Zawada, and um, you know, I'm trying to think, uh, Michael Bain, kids like Ryan Cohen, that many extra possessions, you're gonna have a chance to beat anybody. Um, Not bad. So you know, much respect to the Michigan Wolverines. They are. Um, at the very least, a tough out, a force to be reckoned with. Big game against Rutgers this weekend. You uh, right. a, a winnable yeah. game. And, you know, I mean, honestly, they've got Rutgers, Penn State, and Ohio State left. You know, if they go they, two, they they go two, two and wins. one. They got to have two wins in that. If they go two and one there, honestly, if I'm Michigan, if I'm a Michigan lacrosse fan and a Michigan lacrosse player and coach, obviously, you know, you have the heart of a champion and you want to win every game you play. But if they go after beating Maryland and if they beat two of these three, Rutgers, Penn State, and Ohio State, that's a hell of a season and a hell of a step in the right direction for the Wolverines. Um, and a berth in the Big Ten playoffs. Yeah, so respect. Respect to Michigan. Got to gotta give them some love. They've they they're in a they're in a position where they could they can make the first Big Ten of Michigan's history. Yep. yep. But it's not easy. No, it's not. The Big it's Ten. It's not is, easy. The Big Ten and is it, an absolute dogfight. And going to Maryland on a sunny day, that's not too bad. Going to Rutgers in the position that both these teams are in, that's gonna be a lot worse. You, yeah, you know, Michigan, Rutgers is Rutgers is coming off some tough losses. Uh, Ohio it, State, Hopkins, and, and it's a program win. where just mentally, Maryland going into Michigan, kids don't care. They they just don't. Tillman can go blue in the face trying to get them ready. They're not going to be excited for it. Just from the caliber they're usually playing at. Yeah, going go going to Rutgers. Rutgers isn't going to overlook them. Rutgers it's, off a couple losses, especially after the Maryland win. Yep. It's like yep. you want to you want to mess around and find out what what Michigan's doing. Call a Maryland kid. You know, I don't know if they're going to. They're definitely going to have their eye open, which Maryland didn't. So it'll be a good test to see a team that's expecting a great team. See how they do against, you know, a gritty Rutgers that could get it done. Yeah. You know, a Final Four team from a year ago obviously lost a lot, but still have some of those key pieces. And Rutgers is just – that's just kind of the definition of, of grit, honestly. It's just a gritty program. Um, they're then getting you, up for they're getting up for everybody. So Then you play Penn State. Again, you're in the same boat. And then Ohio State is that big rivalry. They pride themselves off football. Um, both the last two are at home. It's kind of weird. They're almost they're better on the road this year than they are at home, which is kind of a curveball. So every Big Ten team is ranked right now. Hopefully, uh, hopefully these kids can get in a hotel because it seems like going to a hotel is better for them than staying in their own, you know, whatever that that lax house on the corner is down there in Ann Arbor. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean every Big Ten every Big Big Ten team is ranked right now. Um, You know. Give, uh, look, if I'm going to give love to Michigan, I'm I'm going to have to give some Hopkins some love, man. Um, you know, it's starting a good off season the year, three dude, losses, nine and three. Uh, they got a Big Ten schedule, which is you know as as you know aside from maybe the ACC, just because of how good some of those teams are. Mm. Uh, that's as tough as it gets right now. Um, and you know their losses. Dude, their three losses are to UNC, who's you know we they're not awesome this year, but they have athletes. That, as that was a Saturday Tuesday game. Correct, you're that right. They, they had right a bunch after of beating Georgetown. Games. Yep, yep. Good, great call. Tough loss to Loyola four days later, and then they lost to Virginia. You know what are you gonna do? Like they're pretty good schedule. They're putting together a nice year. I think they're seventh in the country right now. Um, I don't think this team has the depth or frankly the athletes on defense to say make a final they have the goaltender though they have a nice keeper they've got some guys on offense that can kind of do it they're a good team 
not a Final Four team yet, but for Hopkins to be nine and three coming off the decade they're coming off, or I guess seven years or so, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, yeah. the Big Ten. Big Ten. You'd it's see uh, what, Peterman? Is that the head coach? Yeah. No, oh, Mil 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 Milliman. Milliman, yeah. Peter yeah. Milliman. I just yeah. combined those. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's kind of coming around for him. Used to be at Cornell, took him a couple years at Hopkins, <clears throat> and he's got his, you know, he's got his pieces playing good ball. Um, and we'll give a little bit of love to the, I mean, we'll talk a little bit about their offense. You know, I think I can remember one episode in particular we were, uh, Definitely tough on on John Crawley as to where his game was towards the tail end of his pro career, but you know he's the OC of a surging Hopkins squad. Um, you know, but I think vibes are high at Homewood, so respect to Hopkins. This yeah. weekend, um, I mean, we have the game of the year, obviously in uh, Duke and Notre Dame. We can get to that yeah. in a minute. You've got three teams in the in this in this year's league that that could win a national championship tomorrow, and it's Duke, Virginia, and Notre Dame. We saw Duke, Virginia. We saw Virginia, Notre Dame, and now we're seeing Duke, Notre Dame. I'm excited. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think before we get to that, you know, I kind of want to I want to finish with that just because that deserves to be our finisher. The headliner. Um, yeah, that deserves to be the headliner. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think we need to give some love to our Penn Quakers, Ooh. um, the cardiac cats. I feel like they've been that since, mm. I don't know, 2019, uh, huge game against the Brown bears this weekend. And I know, you know, Browns have kind of an underwhelming season thus far, but if you read between the lines and understand who yeah. has been suspended, for how long and why they were suspended. Um, Brown's back. Like they can compete with anybody in the Ivy League. They're sitting at four and five. I think they're a dangerous team to be playing right now. Um, I see this being an absolute banger of a game, a one goal type of affair as Penn is used to. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be at Brown. Brown's going to have a big crowd to have their their fans back not really sure on the weather on the east coast what that's gonna be looking like but essentially Penn sitting at four and four you you got to rattle off three out of three out of these next four games to be kind of a you know have a have a shot to get in the tournament um so honestly i don't think they will though well here's the thing i mean are you do you think they are going to lose to Brown. I mean, I think they're Harvard. I just, I'm looking at their schedule right now. Like Harvard isn't very good. I mean, I know Penn kind of seems to play up or down to their comp competition, um, which, you know, is, is a, is a spider. You do not want to be bit by, uh, especially at this time of the year. Um, the loss I, to, I see the them beating Harvard, beating Dartmouth and beating Albany. And I think this is their test right now is Brown. Yeah. This is the this is the biggest for sure. Both are um, desperate. It's an interesting league right now with where people stand. Um, I wonder who's who's even going to host if there's one clear away. Oh, no. oh, oh no. right, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Cornell's I, the class of the league, um, but. You know, these pesky brown bears with these hungry, hungry seniors coming off a six game suspension. Yeah, they're fresh too. They're fresh. Their season's on the line. Every game's a playoff game. Um, you know, these kids, these particular seniors are no strangers to upsetting teams, playing, you know, playing and beating good teams in big moments. Uh, how about how about Dartmouth sitting at the second seed in the league at six and two with one I, and one and one in the Ivy League? Yeah, so they've I mean they've come back they've come down to earth you know I think they just got doubled up by Cornell. Um, I'm gonna give what? Dartmouth I'm gonna give Dartmouth a ton of respect for just the strides they continue to take. I mean last <laughs> year we talked about it a couple of times like they because it was like the Ivy League podcast last year they were a tough out. And they hadn't been a tough out in 15 years. Um, and for them to take another step forward this year and actually 
win some of these games and to, to beat Harvard for their first Ivy League win since 2015, which is it's fun. In, it's insane. Uh, but I mean, I don't think Dartmouth stands a chance in the Ivy League. They're sitting at one and one. They're about to lose to Yale, about to lose to Princeton, about to lose to Penn, about to lose to Brown. Um, so they'll finish the season on five straight losses, all to the Ivy, all of the Ivy League. Um, tough year for Harvard, but um, no, I think I think this Penn Brown game is a sneaky, you know, g- game of the weekend. Clearly after Duke Virginia, but I think that's that's sneaky, the biggest matchup of the weekend a- outside of that game. A lot of implications on the line. Yeah. Um, but, also, like, dude, Georgetown. Georgetown's yeah, kind of back. Yeah, they're playing good ball. I mean, they're still second in the Big East uh, behind yeah, Villanova. Villanova. That's a good win for them. I saw Bundy hit some righty wing low to off hip. It just was reminiscent of myself. Um, <laughs> that was really my highlight of the game. But it was good to see him kind of wake up and score some goals. And it's not a Tucker Dordovic six goal showing and everyone else kind of hangs out and drinks Gatorade. Um, yeah, I mean, look, got to give some love to Minicus. I mean, honestly, all the Minicus brothers. Um for what the three of them are doing this year, but uh, Brian Minicus at Georgetown, uh, he's their leading scorer. Um, playing good ball. Playing very good ball. Sorry, he's their second leading scorer. Unfortunately, he wasted three years at Colgate. Four years, but uh, never a waste to be in Hamilton, New York. Um, <laughs> but um, he's their second leading scorer. He's very dangerous. I mean, their first three, Dordovic, Minicus, and Bundy are – I mean, they sh- with with Bowen. They and the, yeah. I mean, they had some go goalie troubles early. Should be a Final Four lock. So I don't want to say lock, but they're. It should be a Final it, Four it lock. Should they've be got a qu- quarterfinal lock. They've got all the on paper. You're saying this team at the beginning of the year they're like pre ranked number one. And I, I mean, I think they were top three, but I can't call them a lock because that's what I'm saying. On paper, this team should be a lock if they click and can figure out between the lines and in cage. We've got something going. I mean, look, I think the Hoyas are are a dangerous squad. I wouldn't. They're. I don't know won, why they've won five straight. Like I don't want to see them right now. Uh, as, but I don't. As, I don't think Virginia, Notre Dame, as or Snappy Duke, Cowell or Maryland, for that to. matter. That's true. Those four that I just named: Virginia, Duke, Maryland, Notre Dame. I don't think are scared of of Georgetown. Um, no. But um, no, I mean, look, they're they're five. I mean, and three. Notre Dame beat them very handily. Yeah, 15, Notre Dame's nasty. Fifteen um, to eight. Sitting at five and three, they're going to beat Providence. Also, that yeah, Loyola game. Yeah, the Loyola game is circled. Everything and no, else. Nova at the end. And then Nova. Yeah, in the Big East tournament. Do they get so much out? lacrosse left to play? I mean, it's early April. Do they get? Uh, so if they lose to the Hounds and Villanova, do they get it at large? No. Okay. If no. they win out, do they get but lose in the Big East? Do yes. they get it out large? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Win over Princeton. Going good. at Ridley midweek. If they have a win over Princeton, a win over Loyola, and a win over Villanova, and good losses to yeah on a Tuesday, Hopkins, Penn, Notre Dame, they're they and they'll and if they win out. They're going to have a cupcake matchup in their Big East semifinal. So, like, if they end up losing in the Big East championship to Nova after beating them, I think they're in. Um, what if they lose to Nova twice? Then they're, they're on the bubble. Woo! Like, they're, they're, they're biting their nails selection Sunday on the edge of their seats. Um, could potentially be the first out, but they'd still have a chance. Um yeah, I mean, I like this Hoyas team right now. I think they're hot. Uh, I like. Um, I like them getting in as a bubble team and kind of having the opposite experience as they did last year as like a two or three seed. Yeah, I uh, could. I think you're right, honestly. And like, like going on a going on a rip through the NCAA's. Not hosting I the want, game. I wouldn't and, want George. I wouldn't to want them coming up. to town. No. No. That would suck. And like they, they wouldn't be like a they wouldn't be at a two or a three they'd be at like a seven or an eight and that would be a that'd be dicey territory for that seven or eight 
That would be dicey territory. Yeah, no, I, these Hoyas are dangerous. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, moving on to the game of the weekend, I mean, Duke Notre Dame, um, I mean, what can you say? It's like, I think they're the two best teams right now. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see the matchup between Brennan O'Neill and uh, Fake, Chris Fake. Mm. That is bodies those are bodies hitting each other they are big bodies another thing i want to talk about well i thought that was locked uh, another thing i want to talk about who we thought was out for the season he is back number 13 for your notre fighting, dame yeah, fighting fighting Irish. Irish. yeah jake taylor yep. nine g's since he's been back silky mitts on the inside which we love here on snapping towels He's a player to watch for in my book. Came back right to his spot. Kavanaugh's on both sides. He's doing it right. Kavanaugh's on both sides. The kid, uh, Ricky Ardelli, is nasty. Obviously, Dobson is a weapon. Um, you got arguably, outside of, it, I yeah, think, the best, 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 keeper in, Tevlin, best keeper in the country, I think, in my personal opinion, is either Colin Krieg or Liam Eneman. Um, Liam Eneman obviously suits up for the Fighting Irish. This Notre Dame team and has, team USA. yeah, I mean, this Notre Dame team has Memorial Day weekend national champion written all over them. Um, this Duke matchup is going to be really interesting because Duke's offense is filled with big athletes, and that's kind of Notre Dame's, you know. Their, their calling card has obviously been their athletic poles. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a, a battle. And I hope the weather's good, honestly. Although Donowski in the rain, we'll take Scary. that too. Scary. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Duke's on an absolute tear. Wouldn't want wouldn't want them. Uh, it's going to be in Durham. Duke. Love that it's on grass. You know, you know what I think has been a really big, um, like a really nice move by Donowski this year is putting McAdory down at attack. Um, okay. been a n- nice little spark plug down there. Yeah. But really would he like be that. going off more at the midfield? I don't think it's <clears> – <throat> so I don't think it's a question of I – mean, like he, he is a great party starter. Like I think maybe, but I think the um, – like, kind of like, like last year it was musical chairs down an attack. Oh. McAdory is, you know, one of their best offensive players, bar none. You love having the ball in that kid's stick no matter what. Obviously, you know, Brennan O'Neill is, you know, the best in the business maybe in the, at the college level. Um, um, for but sure to, is. But to have McAdory down there as a staple with those two, you got two great dodging threats, a righty and a lefty, and then obviously Dyson Williams. Uh, I love that attack unit. I think that's the best attack unit in the country. Absolutely. I think there's no doubt about that. I think. And then Ledman at midfield, hell of a, yeah, you hell got of a Led- first half. Ledman, Caputo, who's been there for like 10 years, uh, a freshman, you know, top three recruit. And then Aiden Denenza is like kind of woken up and realize he's pretty good at lacrosse so um they've got depth it's it's really if jake nasso or naso but if you're from long island or if you're not however you want to say it yeah um if he shows up if they get a lot of possessions in a in this high scoring game i think duke duke walks out a pretty good pretty good seed but if he kind of has an off game which he did at the beginning of the year at times um it's going to be a battle. I think it's a battle regardless. I think yeah, I mean, team. it's um, I'm taking it's as heavyweight I'm, as heavyweight gets. I'm taking Notre Dame, even you though know, Brennan Brennan O'Neill is the best player on the field. I'm taking I'm, Notre Dame. I'm torn here. I'm pulling for the Fighting Irish because I love the Kavanaugh brothers, and selfishly, I pick them to win the ACC. Preseason, you know what? I, I'm going with Notre Dame. I picked them to win the ACC. Uh, I think they're going to win the national championship. I'm going. I'm saying it right here. Corgan's finally going to get one. The Cavaniers are going to bring it to South Bend, and Notre Dame's going to win the national championship. And 
it starts and started in February when they've been smoking teams, but it starts this weekend in Durham. They're going to go there and beat Duke. That. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Who's the best player on the field? Brandon O'Neill is the best player on the field um, in almost any game. I think in some PLL games, he might be the best player on the field. So. Wow. I, I, I really think that like, I, I think. So Duke finishes with this banger. Then they go to Virginia again. I yeah. love how they wrote how they wrote those so close, and then they have Q's. sandwich it with Notre Dame. <laughs> I mean, I love how the ACCs double up too. It's great playing Q's uh, again. I'd rather see an ACC tournament, but but okay, sure, we don't have that anymore. No, it's yeah. uh, it's a disgrace that that's not around. Um, why did they even take that away? Um, I think because there just aren't enough teams. Like there's there only be one out, right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Leave the worst yeah, ACC. Who at cares? Home. Like I don't care. Just let, have, let Syracuse have, not have, show up. Like have, have an ACC Final Four. Yeah, That's what um, the fans want. Let's talk to someone about that. Um, I agree. Then they have Q's. Then they finish off with the slight Merrimack. Um, so it's these these next two games. These next two weeks for Duke are. Mid mid April for Duke is big. It's big, but with with the Virginia win already under their belt, they I lose mean they're one not of, worried if they lose about, one of these. It doesn't they're, matter. They're not worried about tournament implications. It's just no. you could go to you could go to Notre Dame and lose, and then Virgin you could host Virginia and lose after you already beat them in a in a burner. So yeah. So honestly, I mean, you want to line up and win every game you play and. I think with these two, with these teams, it probably might read too much into this. But if you beat Virginia twice, you're probably not beating them a third time. So, you know, I don't know. Good. I'll, I'll leave. I'll kind of leave that at that. But um, no, it's going to be a hell of a weekend. Cannot wait. Uh, I think this is like the finale of the weekend. I think it's the four o'clock game. Um, I'm excited. Notre Dame Duke. Yeah, can't wait. We both have we both have the fighting Irish. I just declared that they're gonna win out and win the national championship. So I hope that happens. Um but yeah. Uh stoked to be back on the air this week, Kyle. Always a pleasure. Heck of a nap. Uh let's go, let's go Irish.